All right, friends. I'm over at my neighbor Carrie's house. Do you guys remember this cat? And I wanted to show you the system that Carrie set up that's really, really cool. And I think it may help a lot of you off-gridders out there. We struggle with uh, temperature all the time, whether it's the winter or the summer, but we gotta regulate our temperature in our homes for cheap. You know, this may even work for people in regular homes, you know. What this system is, is there's about 400 feet of line, right? 400. Yep. And it's running cold water. It's going down and into the ground all the way around. It's, it's about 10 feet down, right? It's six feet at its shallowest and 15 feet at its deepest. Uh-oh. And you did a video oh. on us. Yeah, yeah. You guys remember the video I did uh, when we dug the ditch a while ago? Um, that's what this was for. Now, there is an air system here. Right there. We haven't got that functioning yet. But <clears throat> the, that pipe is also running down in the ground. But what do we got here? We got the, the water is nice and cool when it comes out of the ground. That is so nice and cool. And then it's running through this radiator. This Is this cold? Very cold. It's taken the temperature of 15 feet down into the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it's at least 65, maybe 60. Yeah. And it will stay that way. Even, uh, even in the winter, it'll stay 60. Yep. So that'll help heat, actually. And then uh, the, we got the two fans blowing here. Oh, oh, we only got one blowing up, okay. I can, you know, I can tell the difference. And have you noticed a big difference? If, if you turn this on in the morning, so it's not fighting the heat so much um, all day, if you turn it on in the morning, then it stays a lot cooler in here during the day? Absolutely. How's it working? Very well. Yeah. Now it's not gonna heat an entire, my whole setup is just under 500 square feet. Yeah. It's not gonna cool down the entire area but it basically is cooling down most of my Arizona room. Yeah. And then I sit kind of in front of where the fans are pointing and it's nice cool air coming out. I love it. I love it. The basic radiator system. Yeah. It goes through the 400 feet of piping. And then I have the PVCC pipe coming up. I got a pump. Yep. I happen to get a one-sixth horsepower submersible utility pump. Now, okay. an inline pump would probably be better, but since I had to buy local, this was probably the most cost-efficient Yeah, Yeah. Uh, we option. put... First, at first, we started off with a really weak pump, and that wouldn't do it. Then we went to we this went to one. big one, and this was too big. This was too big. It's sucking too much power, right? Yes, it was 6.4 amps, which was almost 700 watts which is better than a typical AC, but it's still, depending on the size of your system, that's still a lot of energy. This is only 2.2 amps, this pump. All right. And so it's maybe not more than 300 watts, and that combined with the fans, it's pretty energy efficient. Yeah. <laughs> There's killer. This one is uh, one of her social cats. She's got two other cats that are, aren't as social. I think, in fact, I think they took off when I started knocking, didn't they? Yep, yeah, they went to their hiding spot. <laughs> yeah. But it, I, I notice uh, it's much cooler in here um, than outside. Very so, much. so it's absolutely wonderful. Do you, have you noticed, have you had to run both of these fans? Yes, I have. We okay, okay. Them. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't need to turn it on. But, kind of in the early morning, I just have one fan. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the rest of the air system up here. Basically, it's supposed to, the hot air is supposed to be sucked out up there, and then the cool air is supposed to come in down there. But uh, we we just need more power, more fan power, right? That's right. Uh, one little six inch fan going about 150 feet is not enough to, the air gets cooled, but it's not enough to cool down a, a 200 square foot room such as this. However, the radiator method is. Yeah. Yeah. And well, to go over again for those that don't quite get it, 
you talked about the piping. The piping is all underground. Yep. You get a pump to circulate the water through. And then the cold water that comes from the ground comes up and goes through a radiator. You can use any radiator as long as it doesn't have a leak. This one happens to be an air cooler out of a big truck. It's aluminum, not going to rust. It works just fine, but you can get regular car radiators. You can get a motorcycle radiator. You can go to the junkyard. You can buy brand new, however you want. I got this a good deal. It's a nice big one. And the water, as it gets pumped through here, it does what radiators do. It extracts cool air when it goes through the fins or it goes through the pipes and the fins and then your fan blows the cooler air out and it and does then it comes out the other side yeah and then it routes through the ground again and starts the whole process over for a lot less electricity than getting a compressor ac yeah yeah absolutely poor man's ac i love yeah, it yeah this is awesome. Thanks for sharing this with, with everybody. I'm sure, I'm sure they love it. And this probably isn't ideal, but it works. This is a sump pump, but you can get an inline pump or other similar type of pump. Yeah. But since I'm using the sump pump, this is just the way I have it set up. How often do you have to uh, add more water? Because I'm sure it dissipates, doesn't it? Yeah, because I have the bucket open here, there's going to be a little bit of evaporation. If this was completely closed loop using an inline pump, say, there wouldn't be as much uh, evaporation at right, all. Right, right. So I, I probably have only used a half a gallon in a couple of days. Oh, oh okay. So the okay. evaporation isn't a lot. Yeah, okay. I mean, I could put plastic over that and kind of prevent a little bit. The best scenario was getting an inline pump. But yeah. Hey, this works. It was what the best I could find locally. That is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, I hope this can potentially help a lot of people looking for low, lower energy usage and lower cost cooling systems for off grid. Yeah, and you had a couple other ideas or or uh, things that you mentioned to me, like about earth batteries. Yes, that's the next experiment okay. I will be conducting and we'll walk you through step by step on earth batteries. The name is kind of misleading, yeah. but essentially it's storing hot heat in sand. Sand can store heat very, very well, as can water. However, right. water boils at 212 degrees, whereas sand, you can heat that up very, very hot and sand will retain heat. So the idea of the sand battery is you get a big container full of sand. It's going to be heavy. The sand is heavy, of course. But you enclose it, you insulate it, you fill the big container with sand. In my experiment, I'm looking to make a four by eight box. Yep. Have it all insulated. And then what you do is you use solar panels to heat up the sand. And during the day, when the sun is out, it, by use of solar panels hooked up to uh, resistive wiring, which will heat the sand. So you're going to spread a whole bunch of wire or heating elements, say from a right. stove. or there, There's different angles you can do at this. Uh, heating resistive wire, uh, elements from appliances, mm -hmm. but you attach them. They're DC. You can attach them to the solar panels, and then you spread all the wiring or elements into the sand. Mm -hmm. Solar panels warm that sand up very hot during the day. Mm -hmm. And then the sand holds on to the heat energy for long periods of time. So it makes it ideal if you need to heat your place, especially if you can during the day, but also at night. What I plan on doing is running, running piping through it where the pipe will absorb the heat that's maintained in the yep. sand battery during the day and through the night and just kind of have an air circulating system. So yeah. that's my next experiment and uh, <laughs> definitely can document it. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I kind of just pulled that question out of nowhere. Nope. But uh, okay. yeah, it sounds really cool. And uh, it's practically no cost and very few moving parts, which makes it very nice. Mm -hmm. And if you live in an area that has a lot of sun, it'll be fairly reliable as well, as long as your solar panels work. Yep, yep. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. I Absolutely. want my cat back. I don't know. He looks comfortable here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just so you guys know, there's people still asking me about the, the kitty here. Um, I did not get a cat or in the video it was a dog. 
<laughs> I just borrowed my neighbor's cat. Yeah, and he's so lovely. You're just lovely and social, aren't you? Yeah. Everybody loved you, by the way. I don't know how he lost his leg because I adopted him after they amputated it, but he could have yeah. any number of ways when he was a kitten. Oh, I suppose, but yeah. But he, uh, he has three legs, but he acts like he has six. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very well. They adjust really well. Oh, yeah. Well, I, he's using more legs than we are. We're only using two. That's right. We only got two. He's got three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you once again for sharing. You are so welcome, and I would look forward to doing videos together on other projects to help yeah. with studying and people off grid. For sure. You guys, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share it. That is uh, the vid the thumbs up is the most important analytic to get the video sharing and all that uh, for the YouTube algorithm. So please give this video a thumbs up and also share it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Meow. <laughs>